I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we take a, a deep dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tab that subscribe button, ring that bell, share the video, then you can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. Now, I know this video is delayed, and I'm just going to let you guys know I have just been completely busy uh, and wiped out between work, home, and everything that's going on. It's just been very, very hard to just get time uh, set aside to make a video. So, on the community news stories this week, I may have, I, I may miss a few here and there, but moving forward, uh, again, I'm going to try and get these out every week. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but the little one is doing fantastic. The family is doing well, uh, aside from the fact that it seems that every other day we are exposed to the vid either at uh, work or going out. It's becoming somewhat of a hot spot here in New Jersey. So that's one of the reasons why we've been kind of delayed. That and uh, work has just been obnoxious lately. But let's dig right into the patch notes for September 15th. The Harvest Fest is over, it's done. Uh, we have the high tax rates and everyone's selling things back in Jita. Hopefully moving forward we can do like a rotating things this way that every ITC can be used. Uh, I think that would be well going uh, forward in the future. We're going to come back to the freighter raid uh, <laughs> for specific reasons. Um, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and just jump into the changes that they made this week. Obviously the first one is going to be they updated the estimated prices based on the transactions of the market. We know this. It happens every week. Moving on. Two, when quoting for insurance, the game prioritizes calculating the amount of the IP needed based on the estimated price of the actual materials used. So I believe that's going to be used as uh, the cost of building said item as opposed to what it's going for on the market itself as the fun finished product. A mysterious rogue site will be spawned at a fixed time. Yeah, that's all the information we have on that. We have no other idea what that's going on. We don't even know in the in the CC channel uh, what's going on with that. It's it's just uh, it's a mystery. Um, okay, four insurance claims require a second confirmation if the player decides to waive the claim uh, of some of the items. That's those uh, items that cannot be restored via insurance. Otherwise, they're you know, the brand new modules that are not covered because there's no price history. Uh, but that's what it's going to be moving forward. So you're going to have to have a second confirmation on that. Five, they added a prompt notifying players about the game's PvP aspects when creating new characters. Well, when jumping into this game, if you don't know that it's a pvp oriented game, then, you know, I guess you're going to need all the prompts you can possibly get. Six, Capsular Outposts now have the Corporation Ticker properly prefixed to the names in the overview. Finally, it's back. We can actually see who these uh, outposts belong to again. They took it away from us a couple weeks ago, and we've been begging them to bring it back, and now it's back. Uh, after maintenance scheduled at uh, 0800, September 15th, players will no longer be able to set the reinforcement timer into those outposts. Uh, basically, what's going to happen is the they moved the maintenance day back to Wednesdays instead of Thursdays. So, basically, during that maintenance time, you cannot set your uh, citadels, outposts, anything to be uh, reinforced at that time. It's going to be, if you have it set for that time, it's going to be an hour after that maintenance time. They added new models for offices. Nine, they, the unfinished chat messages will no longer be cleared when passing through a Stargate. Wow, we've only been asking for this for how many months now? I think it's going on about five, six months now that we've had that bug. Number ten, they added descriptions for normal orders and future orders in the market. Okay. They, uh, a navigation mail will be sent to notify players after their capsule outpost is unanchored. Uh, 12. Only members that have the transaction permission can accept corporation insurance contracts. That's for the, uh, the new uh, module added for corporation outposts for the insurance claims. Number 13. Insurance contracts can only be accepted when you are representing your corporation and all received ISK will go into the corp wallet. Okay, number 14 and the last one is now players that have the permission to manage citadels can unanchor level one add-on structures. Unanchored structures will be directly delivered 
into the delivery hangar of the corporation civil. Well, that's good. At least that's that's something nice. It won't you won't have to be sitting in space and have to pick it up. It'll just automatically fly right to that uh, to that hangar. And we all know with a bunch of bugs in the game, they have to fix a few every week. We got three fixes this week. They fixed an issue where players will be directed to the same channel they created when logging in with different characters from the same account. They changed the name of some items. And three, they changed the description for the time when data analyzers and relic analyzers cannot be used. Now, let's talk about this freighter event. It's the 2.0 freighter event, and as you've seen in-game and advertised, Captain Benzie will be on the uh, 18th of this month, uh, just a few days. Uh, and he will be at 1700 UTC time. And yours truly will be on the 19th at 2300 UTC. Now, here's the poster. Now, I, I did change it up a little bit so y'all can recognize exactly who this is. There you go. Now, the way this is going to work is instead of finding it somewhere in low sec, no sec, wherever you got to hunt for it, they have, you know, decided to make this a little bit more challenging for the people. Uh, they're going to, we're going to be in the center of a Nihilus labyrinth. Basically, what they're going to do is they're going to open up 54 gates throughout New Eden. And you're going to have to scan these down. You're going to have to go through the labyrinth to try and find where we are to kill us and get the spoils within, if any of the good ones actually drop. We'll, we'll find out about that. Um, so, it's going to be a great chance for PvP because not only um, will there will be PvP on the, the grid with the freighter, if you go into this Nihilus, you could be potentially entering into another Nihilus space that another group is trying to hunt for so there's gonna be massive pvp throughout the server i love this it's a great change let's see how it goes the test run is going to be on Benzie, and of course the the full run is is mine obviously obviously save the best for last you know and of course you know it wouldn't be a daemon thing if there wasn't just a few twists and turns that aren't uh listed here don't worry i got some surprises laid out so I look forward to seeing you guys at 2300 UTC. Uh, hopefully, you know, I don't screw up the stream. But, uh, yeah. So uh, let's go on with that. I will also state this on the subject. It is very, very surreal to log into the game and see myself in the game, so to speak, if you know what I mean. It's, it's just, a, it's, it's really cool. And it's really humbling that uh, I was picked to do this. Uh, basically by you guys for supporting the channel uh, so yeah thank you for allowing me to do this and giving you the chance to kill me Plex market report I don't really have it in front of me Plex goes up and the Plex goes down it's basically been staying between 1 and 2 million per Plex I can know this without even looking in game but uh, yeah let's move on to the community news now, because of all the things that have been happening over the last uh, week and a half or so with uh, real-life events happening, I did lose a lot of my notes. I do recall a lot of things that happened. Uh, that's where I'm just going to skim over some of these things. And I am sorry. Uh, that is kind of going to be like a Cliff Notes version of the news. But uh, it is what it is. And, you know, I can only apologize and move forward doing better. Uh, the big story of the last two weeks is that Fireflies, the Scourge of the North, has finally dissolved. That's right, with Fireflies dissolving, a lot of the corporations have moved on to greener pastures. A few of these corporations have actually merged into Genesis, one of which not wanting to give up its homeland in Tino, thusly granting Genesis Federation another regional solve point. Now with the uh, dissolution of Fireflies, uh, Silent Federation has removed 20 plus of their corporation citadels in this long, almost 12 month war in the north. And with the north now being free, they're setting their eyes on exactly what else can be done in the game. Thusly, they have reset all of their standings across the board uh, in the south, which means Silent Federation is now neutral to both Pantheon, Catch 22, and Genesis among some of the bigger. Alliances. That also goes for uh, some of the mid-range alliances as well. That's uh, OG, Void, uh, a lot of the others. So basically, they are now neutral with everyone. So it should see some good shakeup 
uh, among the soft standings, as well as maybe possibly some future wars and battles in the near future. Now, they have also been running some great uh, community events as well up in Silent Space. Uh, they actually did a 3 vs 3 tournament with a lot of entries across the map. Uh, of people coming in and the winner of that 3v3 was actually OG uh, winning the grand tournament of that uh, that contest now I am uh, told that they will be running more of these tournaments and uh, I'll see if I can get the information on their upcoming events to share on the channel for anyone that is interested in entering these tournaments Silent Federation led a interceptor roam against Pantheon this past week with some devastating results to the tune of 60 billion in losses from Pantheon. I reached out to Sun Banana about these losses. He did say that they were happening in a time zone that was unfamiliar uh, as these routers were caught unaware. He did congratulate Silent on the successful roam. Now we all know how devastating interceptor roams can be and how strong interceptors actually are currently within the game. Heck, I fly with Weird Bob, who was one of the pioneers of the interceptor roams, alongside, uh, I believe it was Tahini, uh, who also was one of the pioneers of the interceptor roams as well. Just remember, when you see that interceptor in your system, there could possibly be several more following behind it. So congratulations to Silent on a very successful and very devastating roam and caught them unaware. Now, some news from out of uh, Aquarius. Last week we reported on HHA and SS in a territorial dispute and war, possible civil war, with Honey Badgers of Catch-22. Now, from that battle, there was a fight, uh, like I said last week, and Honey Badgers were able to defend and retain their soft. Since then, HHA and SS have joined Pantheon and are now part of Pantheon, so I'm not really sure how the that's going to shake up the area, but one of the big weird things that happened in Quirius this week is Sky News, the alliance in-game that uh, is neutral to everyone uh, because they are a news outlet, out of nowhere has set Sov down within Quirius. Now, from what I gather from a lot of leadership, uh, no one is really happy with this. But also no one's really going to move in on them and force them out uh, due to the standings that everyone is basically neutral with them because they are a news outlet. Also, the space that they dropped it in is in between the contested space of Honey Badgers and HHA. Sources within state that the uh, system that was given to the news outlet, the Russian group, was given by HHA. In other news, a surprising weave from Pantheon to Genesis was a main FC, STJ, who some pilots within Pantheon claimed that he was the best FC within Pantheon. The Swedish pilot said that there was no drama or anything, he was just ready for something new and left on good terms with Pantheon, just trying to do something new with his new Eden career. And in a PSA to players, be advised that there is a glitch currently that allows alliances to uh, gank kill you on low sec gates. This has been brought up to the developers and they are working to fix it. And several alliances, both well known and obscure, have been taking advantage of this feature. Basically what happens is there will be several uh, ships on a gate, there will be tornadoes or whatever, basically alpha damage. And what they'll do is as soon as they see a high price target come uh, within range, they will attack with a T4 frigate or whatever, and then alpha strike with everything else. Now these ships will get destroyed by the gate guns, they are suicide ganking. However. Due to the gate guns being a PVE element and not a actual pilot flying it, they can in get instant recovery of these ships through insurance. So for the price tag of killing a, say, 2 to 8 billion ship, uh, they will have to only pay out um, a few million, a few hundred million to repair their, to get their ship back via Plex. 
uh, some of their lost mails will only go about between 100 to 200 million where they're getting this massive kill. So be advised that these low sec gates and low sec stations are not always safe. If people are targeting you, there's a good chance you may be alpha striked. Uh, either jump through the gate or warp away. Play at your own risk. Now this has sparked a conversation on Reddit whether this is whether this is cheating or not. It is basically believed that it's not cheating because it is working within in-game mechanics. However, is it honorable? That's the question at stake here. And I know several alliances have been taking strides to curtail this uh, gameplay so that it doesn't paint them in such a bad light. My personal feelings aside, I always feel that you should hunt down your target and then kill them instead of just waiting on a low set gate, which in honesty, um, NetEase has been trying to make the safe space of low sec with the uh, massive damage done by the gate guns themselves as well as the warp stasis fields which will prevent anyone from warping away. Now be reminded that this has always been something within the game going back to the burn Tama days where a number of players would just suicide gank from the Tama gate. They've always found ways around this whether it be warp off, staying, uh, speed tanking the guns, there will always be some variation of this in the game. So just be advised that players are now using the insurance program to fast uh, go around doing this throughout the night. Currently most everyone in New Eden is gearing up towards the new capital ships that will be arriving next month, which I'm sure will uh, produce a lot more varied warfare uh, at moving forward. Like I said, I lost a lot of my notes this week due to real-life events and things going on. Uh, so it is going to be a brief episode. Uh, but moving forward, we do have a Corporation Alliance Spotlight this week in the form of Nov F, uh, Novus Antilles. And the Spotlight specifically this week is for Novus Fabricatio, who is now recruiting active Eveclus pilots of all tech levels. Novus Fabricatio, or Nov F, is a founding corporation of the Novus Antilles Alliance and plays a critical role in the Catch-22 Coalition. Having occupied and defended the Catch region since the launch of the game, Catch-22 Coalition is managed by an experienced, well-organized leadership council who have each built stable and successful EVE Echoes alliances. So don't waste your time riding in high sec. Come and join Catch-22's fleets operating in the U.S., EU and Australian time zones and work together to take on T-10 anomalies and reap the reward of living in NullSec. As a pilot in Nov F, uh, you can enjoy bonus bounty payments thanks to the newly installed bounty management centers and easily access the most profitable anomalies using the pirate uh, detection array uh, citadel structures. If you're looking for more content than just ratting in NullSec, you can always choose to take part in the Home Defense or CTA fleets for entertaining PvP experiences. Nav F uh, pilots have been on the grid for some of the largest fleet engagements of the game has seen since, uh, since to date alongside allies of Genesis Federation and Pantheon. Alternately, feel free to take your time to make your own path and scan, explore, or mine in the entire region of the NullSec that Catch-22 calls home. Membership of the Nav F includes all the usual benefits of belonging to an established Eve Echoes Corporation with ship replacement programs and or buyback services. The Coalition Discord community is also always active with experienced players. Being part of Catch-22 feels like being a member of one of the massive Eve Echoes Corporations. Search NOVF in game to apply or join Discord and speak to a recruiter today. Uh, new members will also receive a free blue donut while stocks last. Uh, the Discord and website links will be provided in the description below. And now the big kills of the week. The Gula Gang Not Purple Shoot It Fleet starts us off with a 15.1 billion rattlesnake kill. Genesis Federation shows up with a 4.6 billion Abaddon kill, a 3.4 billion rock kill, a 6.4 billion Vindicator kill, and a 9.5 billion Rattlesnake kill. Pantheon has a good showing with a 4.8 billion Sigil kill, three Rattlesnakes, 
uh, one at 8 billion, one at 8.2 billion, and one at 8.4 billion. Two Macarials, one at 5.2 billion, and one at 5.4 billion, and a 3.4 billion Apoch Striker kill. Revs shows up with a 3.4 billion Rock kill, a 3.4 billion Dominic's 2 kill, and a 3.5 billion Ashmu kill. The Six Steel Alliance has twin Macarials, one at 5.5 billion, one at 7.3 billion, a 5.1 billion Apocalypse Striker kill, a 3.5 billion Raven Striker kill, and a Balgorn kill. Catch 22 has two Macarials, one at 5.8 billion, one at 5.5 billion, two Rattlesnakes, one at 9.7 billion, the other at 15.1 billion, and a 3.1 billion Rock kill. ATL has a 5.6 billion Macario kill and a 6.6 billion Vindicator kill. ARA has a 7 billion Nightmare kill. No has a ton of kills this week in the faction variety, but uh, because they keep sending me like 8 of this kill, 9 of this kill, we're just going to look at the highest in each category. We have a 9.7 billion Rattlesnake kill, a 7 billion Abaddon kill, a 6 billion Balgorn kill, a 10.1 billion Nightmare kill, a 12.4 billion Macario kill, a 9.5 billion Vindicator kill, as well as this 10 billion Cinnable kill. Void shows up with a 3.1 billion Cinnable kill, and TO with a 4 billion Astero kill. Now, I do want to let you guys know that the longest portion of doing the videos each week or bi-weekly, whenever I can get them out, is sorting through the big kills. The solo kills are pretty easy to, to sort through, but from now on, when you guys do want to send me your big kills, please always, when submitting the kill mail, please let me know which alliance uh, you are with, or if it's just a corporation, which corporation you are with. It just makes it easier for me to put these videos out a little bit faster, because the big kills actually takes me about anywhere from two to three hours sorting through, uh, trying to remember which corporation belongs to which alliance, uh, contacting each person individually and waiting for them to get back to me. It would just make my life just a little bit easier and I would love it if you guys could do that for me. Okay, so before we get to the solo kills of the week, we do have a few honorable mentions. The f uh, one is another broken kill due to the estimated value price of the anniversary skins. Uh, that's right, the anniversary skins are still adding up to over 100 billion to the kill mail, and it's just comical at this point. Uh, another honorable mention, uh, albeit a big kill, not a solo kill, uh, shows us another pilot who is just days old buying into faction battleships that they should not be flying. Here we have a 6.4 billion Vindicator kill. However, let's take a look at the ship and see the glaring issues and the heartbreaking choices that they made. Okay, so first off, we have the high slots, and here is someone that just wants all the possibilities open to them. Not only rails, but also lasers, cannons, and missiles. Uh, this is also a pilot who is a fan of balanced defense, with not only shield extenders and boosters, but also armor plates and a repper as well. And lastly, we see the rigs. Yes, the Auxiliary Thruster 3 and the Rail Coercion 3 are good choices, but then we also wanted to boost the damage of that single strike cannon. And I guess they uh, ran out of ISK because we do see a prototype CCC rig on there as well. And now we come to everyone's favorite part of the week. This is the solo kills and a chance to win a free Omega combo. All right. Because it's been a little while since I did a, last, a video over 10 days, um, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of the top 10, I've expanded it to the top 15, and the top two kills of the week will both receive an Omega combo. So starting us off, we have Volant with a 2.033 billion Atron Interceptor kill. Razik, 47, with a 2.452 billion Estero kill. Wolf Run with a 2.483 billion Terra kill. Mistrix Meow with a 2.674 billion Coveter 2 kill. 
Freya Bloodlust, a 3.076 Maelstrom kill. Brave Toaster, a 3.205 billion Atron Interceptor kill. Gorilla Glue with a 3.239 billion Estero kill. Opid with a 3.306 Estero kill. Monsieur Hank with a 3.473 Apoc Striker kill. Shadow 8mm with a 3.574 billion Prophecy 2 Command kill. Argoarks with a 4.1 billion Dominix 2 kill. Chud Bucket with a 4.6 billion Astero kill. Very nice. Wind with a 6.8 billion Balgorn kill. Reaper of Twice with a 7.8 billion Balgorn kill. And Dex 257 with this astronomical 9.2 billion Coveter 2 kill. That's right. This is what happens when you put integrated rigs on your mining vessel. So, congratulations to both Reaper of Twice and Dex257. Please DM me uh, via Discord and I will be able to get that prize out to you. And that wraps this episode up. Now, if you need more news in your life, I suggest you go over to check out Sky News, the premier Russian news outlet. Uh, They just uploaded a new video today. Uh, The translations should be up there. Most videos always do have the English translations in the subtitles, even though they are Russian by nature. But they always have a great production over there, and sometimes they get stories that we don't overhear. And I suggest you also listen to Rambo's ever-popular Echoes of New Eden podcast, where he has roundtable discussions each and every week, as well as interesting interviews with prominent figures of the community. So, have a great week, have a great weekend, fly safe, and remember, we are always one vision, one purpose, one front.